The following show features stories from the ADRA network. ADRA is the Adventist Development and Relief Agency, a ministry of the Seventh-day Adventist Church. We strive to walk in the footsteps of Jesus and share God's love and compassion to people in every corner of the world. Each story you see in this series represents our mission to change the world one life at a time. To learn more, please visit us online at adra.ca. Right now, there are over 20 million people around the world being trafficked for commercial sex or forced labor. This modern day form of slavery is a multi-billion dollar industry and is a complex system that includes the recruitment, transportation, and exploitation of people by deception, coercion, or force. You don't have to use locks and keys to control people. Often the, the human trafficker will sell a story of something which we can offer to your child that you can't offer to them. Not every parent would make such a decision to sell their child in, into sex traffic. These incredibly hard decisions are the result of extreme poverty. Two or three thousand yeah. baht? Yeah. So about how many dollars is it? 150 dollars yeah. for the whole year. Yeah. Wow. Every day, these girls wake up to a world of possibility, a chance to change the trajectory of their lives, to escape the cycles of poverty and despair they have been trapped in. We face issues and challenges that are so complex. We have to rely on faith in God to pull us through. How do we as individuals who, you know, have resources, how can we share those resources to protect those girls? It's not just the 30 girls that are in the shelter now, but it's the lives that they're gonna save through their testimony, through their view of the world. This world of ours is more beautiful, more complicated, and more inspiring than we could ever imagine. My name is Sanjay, and this is the story of a journey with Adra to serve a hurting world. I've spent the last six months seeing a side of our planet that not many people get to see, witnessing the most incredible challenges and the most extraordinary hope. Together, we've got a chance to impact the world in a whole new way. This is A Closer Walk. Northern Thailand is an idyllic landscape of rolling hills, lush vegetation, and farmland. This region is also home to over one million hill tribe people who live in the villages scattered through the forests that straddle the border between Thailand, Laos, and Myanmar. Because these groups have historically shifted across the borders of these countries, they've never been fully recognized as Thai citizens. Thailand has the third largest stateless population in the world, with almost a million people living in Thailand who do not have citizenship. This lack of citizenship, combined with extreme poverty, makes the hill tribes particularly vulnerable to human trafficking. We're at the, the heart of the Golden Triangle, the point where three countries come together. We have Laos on the right-hand side, we have Myanmar in front of us and we have Thailand. We're standing on the Thai side. The history goes back to the, the founding of Thailand. Really, the people, the Thai people, came from China, Tibet area in a migration um, through this area down the rivers to settle Thailand. Thomas Benton is the director of Adra Thailand and works to fight human trafficking in the region. We're nearby to Chiang Sen, the first city that was kind of founded by the Thai people uh, and what later became the Thai Kingdom. So it's been that important crossroads of people moving uh, from the north to the south. But it hasn't just been people moving through this infamous locale. After World War II, almost all of the heroin in the world came from and was transported through the Golden Triangle. 
this area is much more known for the drug trade. Opium has traditionally been grown here in this region and has been then transported to other places. So this area is already a major trade route linking Thailand and China, and it's just growing by leaps and bounds. So they're putting in a, a port here on the Mekong. We expect the number of commercial goods obviously is going to increase, but we expect that to also impact the trafficking route for humans, that it's going to make it easier as there's more trucks moving, more people moving, that more uh, brokers, more uh, human traffickers are going to exploit the situation. To help combat the ever-increasing number of young girls being forced into the sex trade, the Keep Girls Safe program was started to help protect those girls from the hill tribes who are at the highest risk. Tucked away down a country road in the heart of the Chiang Rai province, the program has a shelter that houses 30 girls who would otherwise be targets for trafficking. I met with Joy Nungle, who is the project manager for the Keep Girls Safe program and she took me on a tour of the shelter. Yeah, and behind the shelter, we grow the banana garden, yeah. And oh, right, on, right yeah, over there, all yeah, those yeah. plants over there. This is a fish pond. This the, they only have the fish, just one kind of Thai fish, yeah. Uh, and now we have about 300, just new. new 300, vegan, 300 fish vegan, in this fish pond, pond right and, here. Yeah. So the girls take care of the fish. Yeah, take care of the fish. And do they also have a role in the gardening? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Have a yeah, do the gardening also. Every so girl. They, they all they all work together. Yeah, work together. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, all the banana garden we stuff. We have a chicken farm. Yeah. <laughs> Two girls have a duty to for keep for chicken every every evening. You have a lot of chickens. Yeah, have about. 60, 60 chicken now. The shelter provides a great safe place for the girls to be. They're coming from home environments that, that have a lot of risks and abuse and neglect and other factors going on. Obviously the staff take care of the girls, but the girls take care of the girls as well, which I think is really nice. You'll see a lot of the older girls take care of the younger girls, teaching them and just taking care of them like older sisters. So I think there's a really nice, warm environment here. It really is a place where their confidence can be rebuilt and their future rebuilt. Each girl at the shelter has a unique story, but they are all here because they are at a very high risk of becoming victims of human trafficking. B is the most recent addition to the group, and like a lot of the girls here, she comes from a very poor family often struggling just to find their next meal. If her parents decide that it is time for B to come home and work to support the family, there is nothing that can be done to keep her here. The shelter can't protect these girls against what is often the biggest threat, their own families. Each of the girls at the Keep Girls Safe Shelter in Northern Thailand has been rescued from a living situation which would have almost certainly led to them being trafficked for sex or forced labor. B is the newest girl at the shelter, and like so many of the other girls here, the threat of being trafficked begins at home. Instead of going to school, her father was making her work in the fields, earning only a few dollars a day. เพราะเรามองเห็นแล้วว่ามันเสี่ยงเพราะน้องไม่ได้เรียนต้องไปทํางานพอไปทํางานสังคมที่น้องเจอคืออะไรก็คือคนคนที่มักจะไม่ได้
คะเพราะว่าความยากลำบากตรงนี้ทำให้ครอบครัวของอหนึ่งอย่างก็คือพ่อพ่อติดยานะคะก็คือทำลายร่างกายด้วยบางทีน้องก็อาจจะโดนแต่น้องไม่บองเนาะเพราะน้องเป็นคนรักครอบครัวมากจะให้ข้อมูลเราดีมากเมย์ถึงว่าให้ความร่วมมือมากแต่ว่าแต่ว่าถ้าเกิดเมื่อไหร่ก็กินเหล้าหรืออะไรไงเงี้ยเขาก็จะไม่ไม่ใช่คนเดิมละเขาจะเป็นอีกคนหนึ่งเลย But here, B is safe and protected. You don't have to spend much time with her to understand just how much she loves it here. ขาดในเรื่องของพจนาการเนาะก็หน้าตาก็จะเศร้าหมองเนี่ยค่ะก็จะไม่เห็นรอยยิ้มของแกแล้วก็ชอบบอกเสมอว่าเวลาถามเขาว่าอยากจะเป็นอะไรในอนาคตเขาก็จะบอกว่าอยากจะเป็นเสียพิบาลอย่างเงี้ยนะคะเขาจะถามว่าอยู่ที่นี่หรืออยู่ที่บ้านก็จะอยู่ที่นี่อย่างเงี้ยค่ะเขาจะตอบเราอย่างนี้ Unfortunately, the decision to stay is not B's to make. เกิดจะสภาพปัญหาครอบครัวแล้วก็ส่งเสริมให้เรียนหนังสือเยอะๆเลยเพื่อที่ว่าสูงเท่าที่สุดเราที่ที่เราจะช่วยได้เนาะเพื่อที่ว่าชีวิตของน้องจะได้ดีขึ้นกว่านี้อย่างเงี้ยค่ะ At any time, her father could bring her home and put her back at risk for being sold into forced labor or prostitution. The issue of human trafficking is a very complex one. We often take it at face value, and we think, you know, how could a parent, you know, sell their child into slavery, into sex slavery? And we often think of this as being this closeted thing in the middle of the night. But you know, poverty drives people in different ways. The poverty line is quite low. Ten dollars a day is the minimum wage. Many people are living below that. You know, five dollars a day. Um, that they're trying to make ends meet with. If you've got a family and you've got a number of children and you know that without some source of income to be able to buy food for the family is that your whole family's going to die. So do you sell off one of your children in order that the others might survive? These incredibly hard decisions are the result of extreme poverty. Part of the solution is about changing the culture of the communities that are so vulnerable. We're headed up to Changsan area. This is an area where we've been doing our community part of the project. We're trying to raise awareness in the communities about the risk of trafficking, raise awareness about how to identify trafficking, and trying to get that message out to the communities. To do this, they have formed community groups made up of children that meet after school. They're a place where the youth come together. They get to to interact. They get to learn. Oftentimes, we do a bit of teaching about the risk of trafficking, and then we ask them to come up with ways to share this, whether it's art, whether it's drama, skits, and things like that. So these. Kids in the youth clubs are basically staving the flow. We're empowering yeah. them. We're empowering them to to intervene exactly. when they see it, and and teaching them what are the likely signs so that they know when to intervene and and how to intervene. We teach our youth groups. About child rights, about education, about how to teach other people about the risks of trafficking and child rights. And so it goes peer to peer. Children um, teach their classmates, teach the people in their village, and it helps their their other siblings. It helps their extended family. So and that makes things worthwhile. <laughs> Talking openly about trafficking and being able to identify the warning signs is starting to create shifts in the communities. The brokers who buy and sell children are often victims of desperate situations themselves. A current of desperation drives the forces of the trafficking industry. Brokers offer families upfront money and false promises in exchange for the girls. Not every parent would make such a decision to sell their child in, into sex trafficking. But if they thought that their child was going to get benefit, so often the, the human trafficker will sell a story, you know, opportunity of education, of something which we can offer to your child that you can't offer to them. 
the broker shows up and they're offering this great opportunity to get out of the situation. You know, here's a down payment, I can give you a thousand dollars and your girl's gonna have this great job. And it turns out to be exploitation in the sex industry and that initial payment of money that was gonna be such a help to the family turns into the thing they hold over the girl that she can't go back, you've got this debt you have to pay off. If you're desperate, desperation drives you to things that you would not normally do. It doesn't mean that those parents aren't as devastated by it, but they've had to make a judgment, they've had to make a call about it. I think it, many of us, you know, when we first hear the word trafficking, we really expect it to be somewhere where people are forcibly held and, you know, they're locked up and, and it's some physical constraint on them. But you don't have to use locks and keys to control people. It's hard to imagine how hopeless your conditions would have to be in order to justify the kinds of arrangements many of these families make. But it's also hard to imagine what it's like to live in total poverty, stuck in a constant cycle of labor and debt with no chance for education or escape. What are the conditions that could lead you to sell your own daughter? Human trafficking is a serious threat for many girls from the hill tribes of northern Thailand. At the Keep Girls Safe Shelter, remarkable things are happening to get these girls out of harm's way and teach them valuable skills so that they might have a better future. So Joy, where are we headed now? We're going to uh, Pim Village. The situation in that village, uh, many people, especially women, go to prostitution at Bangkok. Tell me about Pim's story. Yeah, uh, Pim uh, that come to live with the KGA project uh, about seven, seven years ago. Her mother left her when she was a little girl, and her father does have a problem with uh, drug and alcoholism. Pim also has two stepsisters working in Bangkok as prostitutes. Even though she is at a very high risk for trafficking, it is necessary for her to go visit her family to see if anything has changed that would allow her to return home. And her father said, if she come back to live with her, I would like to send her to work with her sister at Bangkok and uh, earn money and come back to feed to the family. So if yeah. Pim were to go back yeah. to her father's yeah. house, he would send her yeah. to work as a prostitute in yeah. Bangkok or wherever so that she could earn money yeah. for him. Yeah. And how old is Pim again? Uh, Pim is now 14 years old now. 14? Yeah. yeah, 14 years old now. Sometimes parents will want their children to go back and work to support the family. And I know from a Western point of view that can seem really selfish, but if you're a parent that has five children and you are earning less than $5 a day and you have a child that can help you feed your other children, it's, it's really complicated. Obviously the staff try and talk to the parent and they try and negotiate and plead on behalf of the girl, but ultimately we can't legally hold someone else's child without their permission. It's troubling to think that a parent can bring a girl back into this high-risk situation and that no one can do anything about it. In one moment, her father can change the course of her entire life. When we walked up to meet Pim's father, I wondered if today would be the day he would decide to bring his daughter back from the shelter. And I tried imagining what Pim must be feeling in that moment. 
As they showed me around the house, it was obvious that this was one of the nicest houses in the village. This is the new home of her, uh, almost two years for this home, and before I have just like an old home that's the, not good like that. This is the new home that uh, her, uh, there, there's, uh, her, her stepmother's uh, daughter sent send the money to build this home, yeah, build this new home. Mm -hmm. So the funds from the prostitution allowed yeah. them to have a yeah. better house? Yeah, better house. But Pim's stepsisters are not victims of human trafficking. They have chosen to be prostitutes, which means the money they make is theirs to send home. A child sold into the sex trade will be indebted to the broker and unable to send home any money. Unfortunately, that is not the story that the broker will sell Pim's father. Pim's father does hard manual labor and makes very little money. So it's easy to imagine how willing he would be to believe anyone selling the hope for a better life. So about how many dollars is that? How many dollars? 150? 150 dollars yeah. for the whole year. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Wow. How much money do the stepdaughters send send back? How many things do you have? Uh-huh. 2,000 baht. Uh, 2,000 baht, but not, not every month. Just some time. So but there's some them. months that yeah. they send back yeah. as much money as yeah. he makes in a year. Yeah, you should. Yeah, yeah, just like that. When you come to this hillside village, prostitution is just another means to an end, that end being survival. And if your older sisters are in the trade, it bolsters the expectation that every daughter, little girl in the family is supposed to enter this trade. It's clear to me that Pim is best off in the Keep Girls Safe program. But only her father can make the decision to let her continue living in the shelter. It's hard to know if today is the day he'll decide to bring her home. For the last seven years, 14-year-old Pim has been living at the Keep Girls Safe Shelter to keep her from being trafficked into the sex trade or forced labor. But at any time, her father can request she comes home. Since he already has two stepdaughters working as prostitutes, and since their earnings helped the family build one of the nicest houses in the village, it's not hard to imagine what the future holds for Pim if her father decides he wants her back. There is a very real chance that any time Pim is brought to her village to check in with her father, he may decide that she has to stay. He said, now have a little bit of a difficult life, not much money much to earn to their family, and not ready to take Pim, <laughs> come back to live with her family right now and need her help from the shelter to take care of him. It's got to be tough being told by your family that they can't take you back. But as painful as it may be, it still seems like a far better option for Pin to return to the shelter than take her chances at home. We face issues and challenges and problems that are so complex, so multifaceted, um, that the best of our human understanding is still not enough to fully comprehend them. 
We have to rely on a faith in God and His wisdom to pull us through. So I think that's a, a powerful thing, that God does lead us when we trust Him, when we stop relying only on ourselves. Even though they've had incredible adversity, the girls are so brave and strong and self-disciplined. They work so hard at school and they, they all learn a musical instrument and they're learning English or Chinese. And Two of our girls last year went to university and you know their parents can't read and write. That's amazing because that cycle of poverty is broken in their family and the girls will be able to have good incomes and to support their own children. For us, our hearts are lifted when we see these girls succeeding in life, when we can see them after a year or two and they have finished their degree or if they've started a family and we see them being positive role models now for their family. We're overjoyed when we get to see them being productive uh, and successful and confident women. And we know the future is going to be great when they succeed. Every day, these girls wake up to a world of possibility, a chance to change the trajectory of their lives, to escape the cycles of poverty and despair they have been trapped in. Each day here gives them more of the tools they need to build a different life for themselves. I think all of us in our lives, you know, we've all faced challenges, certainly not to the extent that these girls have, but we know that we don't escape those problems overnight. We grow, we move beyond them, but they're still a part of our past. We know our family is always going to be our family. What really stands out to me is the comparison between where they are from and how healthy and positive of an atmosphere that they're growing in now. Ultimately, I believe that it's our responsibility to say, how do we as individuals who, you know, have resources, how can we share those resources to protect those girls? It's not just the 30 girls that are in the shelter now, but it's the lives that they're going to touch the lives that they're gonna save through their testimony, through their view of the world. These girls are just like girls back home. They want the same things out of life. It just makes you feel relieved that there are people in this world that are willing to give of themselves for those less fortunate.